Welcome back. We are going to get started on turn number four. We're first going to go ahead and draw for our friendly HQ event. And no event this turn. Our commanding officer is still sitting in the staging area, so he's in contact with battalion. That means we're going to activate him with a card draw. Again, minus one for being green and uh, no other modifiers. Um, so we are going to get a three commands for our HQ. And with those commands, we're going to go ahead and activate the first sergeant and the first platoon HQ. So that's going to cost us two commands. And then we're not going to do anything else with the CO this turn. So we'll go ahead and bank his one remaining command. Okay. We'll go ahead and activate the first sergeant and the first platoon in that order. First draw is going to be for the first sergeant. First sergeant is sitting in cover right now, so his three commands becomes four. And the first platoon HQ is also in cover at the moment. Whoops, we got a reshuffle. And first platoon HQ is going to get a draw of four plus one for being undercover, minus one for being green. So that's going to be a net of four commands for first platoon as well. And we'll go ahead and get the deck shuffled and figure out what we're going to do with these units. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start to trying to pound this bunker now. So we've got our 50 cal back here in the upper story. It's um, no longer moving, so it's automatically going to place its fire on that spotted unit. So that's going to immediately upgrade our uh, VOF to heavy weapons instead of the uh, small arms fire that we had there previously. So that's going to be a real bonus. The first sergeant is going to try to add to that by going ahead and ordering the uh, 50 cal to concentrate fire. So normally that's a two card draw, but because the um, heavy machine gun is on a um, uh, tripod, we're going to get to draw an extra card for that. So we'll go ahead and draw our three cards, one, two, and three, and we do get our concentrate fire. So we get to go ahead and add concentrate fire marker to that bunker as well. So that's a pretty great thing. Now the next thing we're going to do is we've also got our artillery forward observer up in that upper story. And the first sergeant is going to go ahead and order the FO to call for high explosive on that bunker as well. If we get that, that's going to bump our VOF up to a minus 5 to start with instead of the minus 3 for the 50 cal. So we'll go ahead and call that in. So um, most um, Normandy missions you get three draws, but in the first mission you only get two card draws. So we'll draw two cards for that. And that's what we wanted. And that is definitely not what we wanted. That short round, what that's going to do is basically require us to, instead of hitting the target we intended, we move one card closer to the forward observer that called it. So since the forward observer is here, we move one card closer and we're going to drop our artillery right on top of that first squad. Not a great thing for us. Yikes. Okay, so that cost us two of our sergeant's commands. So we drop from four to two. That's all the first sergeant is going to do. So we're going to go ahead and save the remaining uh, commands from the first sergeant. So he's going to go up to four saved commands now. And we'll go ahead and uh, deal with first platoon. First platoon is going to go ahead and get himself out of the building. So he's going to order a command to himself and to the squad with them, the 2-1, to exit the building. So that's going to cost two commands. And of course they'll be exposed, but at this point that's not a huge deal because they're pretty much behind all the fighting at this point. And that's going to cost the first platoon two commands. And he's going to go ahead and stop as well and bank those remaining two commands. And with that we're ready to go ahead and draw for the initiative. Alright, we're going to go ahead and draw for the second and third platoons in order. So we'll draw for the second platoon. Second platoon is sitting in the open. So that's a two minus one for being green. So second platoon gets one command. And third platoon is under cover. And so third platoon is going to get three minus one plus one for a net of three commands. 
and let's go see what they're going to do with those. Okay, we're going to go and get started with the third platoon. And my goal on this turn is to try to see if we can't get this squad up here in the farm engaged. Right now he's just sitting there taking shots at my units over here and I'd like to get that dealt with. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and move the third platoon with a platoon move up to the hedgerow. Of course, they'll move under cover. So that's going to cost us two commands to do that. And we'll go ahead and place them under a exposed marker as well. That's two commands. We're going to go ahead and order the third squad to attempt to spot the uh, squad in the farm. So that's going to be a base draw of two, plus one for the ABOF and minus one for it being under cover. So net of two cards. So we draw two cards and we go ahead and get our spot. So that's going to allow us to remove the question mark marker. And now that we can see them, um, we want to go ahead and apply some fire. So I'm going to go ahead and order a shift fire command. That doesn't happen automatically. This PDF is going to stay here until somebody orders them to stop. But we're going to order the shift fire command and that is going to allow them to go ahead and pull that PDF over here. And we'll go ahead and place a small arms VOF on that as well. Okay. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and see if I still have a pinned bazooka unit. I'm going to go and see if I can get that bazooka unpinned so that maybe we can use that to take a shot. So the bazooka is lying, so an attempt to rally is going to cost me two commands. Or two cards. It's going to allow me to draw two cards. So we have one and two. And again, we're looking for the word rally up here. We did not get it. So the bazooka remains pinned. And so we used a total of five commands for the third platoon. So we used all three of his allocated commands plus the two commands that he had saved up going into this turn. So he's completely out of commands at this point. And second platoon, actually I don't really need to do anything with him right now. I don't really want to move anybody up into the orchard while we're still under that automatic weapons fire. So for now we're going to go and let second platoon sit where he's at. And we'll go ahead and move on to the command initiative phase. And to do that, we only have the XO that hasn't been activated yet. So we'll go ahead and activate the XO. He's going to get his one command. And this time we're actually going to use him. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move the 160 and the XO up into the hedgerow. And again, they're going to get marked with exposed. And of course, they're moving under cover. There's no reason not to. Obviously, it's good for them to be under cover. So that's going to cost the XO the one command that he started, that he was allocated, as well as one of his saved commands. And that's going to be the end of the command initiative phase. Finally, we're going to go ahead and draw for our general initiative. So we'll draw one card for general initiative and we get a whopping one with that. Okay. Well, what I think I'd like to do here is this bunker way over here on the left side doesn't really concern me. It's not something I really need to try to take out. Um, it's not gonna prevent me from reaching objective two. I've already cleared the PC marker here, so I really can kind of abandon that whole corner of the map if I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that um, one initiative command and I'm going to go ahead and pull back the uh, one three the first squad of the third platoon and pull him back undercover with the XO and I can do that because this hedgerow is not under fire Oops, I already have the exposed marker um, what I really need is a pinned marker which is of course the other side but that hedgerow is not under fire and has friendly units occupying it. And so it's a legal place for a pinned unit to move. So we use our one general initiative command that way. And with that, we're done with the general initiative. It's time to move on to the enemy segment. And we will start by drawing our enemy HQ event. And we did not get an enemy HQ event this turn. We'll move on now to the enemy activity checks. 
So I have five cards now with enemies on them. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm just gonna number those one to five left to right and draw a random card to figure out which card we're gonna deal with first. So a four means we're gonna deal with the bunker first. So we're gonna deal with the bunker first. I've got a HMG and a squad in there. I'm gonna call the HMG one, the squad two. We'll draw again and we'll see we're gonna deal with the HMG first. So right now they're under fire from a direction other than their PDF. So that's gonna mean a draw four uh, to see what the result is. We draw four and get a two. And like we've been getting, that's a concentrate fire att attempt. So the HMG is gonna to attempt to concentrate fire. He's gonna do that by um, uh, drawing three cards, two for the base plus one for the tripod. So we've got three cards being drawn. Oops, and reshuffle. And of course, we get the concentrate fire. We'll go ahead and place that concentrate fire on our hedgerow. And then we'll shuffle and deal with the squad's result. Okay, the squad in the bunker is in the same boat as the HMG, so we'll draw a random four to determine what it does. A random four results in a two, which is again, attempt to concentrate fire. And the squad only gets two draws, but that is all it takes. So we're going to have yet another concentrate fire on our first squad, first platoon. We'll go ahead and draw now a random four. We have four enemies left on the board. See which one we're gonna do next. And we get number four, which is the orchard. So the orchard has a PDF out, but nobody's firing at it. So it does an automatic concentrate fire attempt against its target. So we'll go ahead and draw two cards for that. And a third concentrate fire marker now on the one one. This is not a good turn for that squad. It's having a very, very rough day right now. All right, we have three enemy units left to deal with. We'll go ahead and draw a random three to determine which one we're doing next. We draw a random three and get a three. So we'll resolve the uh, unit in the cemetery, the LMG up there. Again, He's uh, got a PDF, but he's not under fire, so he's gonna automatically attempt to concentrate. Um, unlike the HMG, does not have a tripod, so we only draw two cards for the concentrate fire attempt, and he does not make it. We'll draw now a one and a two to determine what we do with the remaining units, the bunker and the uh, farm. So random two, we get a one, and a one again is automatic concentrate attempt. So we'll start with the HMG. He's got three draws for the, the tripod. So one, two, and three draws. And we do not get our concentrate fire uh, right there. We'll go ahead and attempt to concentrate fire with the squad as well. That's gonna be a draw of two cards. So one, two, that one is successful. So we'll go ahead and place a concentrate fire on the pin litter team. And now that leaves just the squad in the farm. So again, it's under fire from a direction other than its own PDF. So it's gonna draw on a random four. And this time we actually get a four and a four result on that chart is a shift fire. So it's automatically going to shift fire um, and it's gonna go ahead and start attacking the third platoon that moved up here. Really making me rethink that whole move. So we're gonna go ahead and place the automatic weapons fire, um, a new automatic weapons fire on that hedgerow. And the woods here is gonna lose its concentrate fire uh, because it's no longer, in, or I'm sorry, crossfire. It loses the crossfire that was on it. All right, with that, I think we're done with all the enemy activity checks and we're ready to go ahead and start our VOF segment. And the very first thing we're gonna do is flip our fire marker. Now we don't have any mutual uh, capture, we don't have any mutual com or, uh, vehicle combat this phase, so we're going straight into the VOF phase. So we're gonna flip our fire marker this immediately has a couple of effects. 
first thing it does is it effectively blocks all line of sight out of and through this card. So what that means is that the 50 cal machine gun that I've got firing up here no longer is be able to fire at the farm and even worse it actually pulls back its fire to this card. So that means that the 1-1 one one is now under AVOF or HVOF instead of AVOF from friendly units. Not that it's going to matter all that much. Um, and then this is going to drop back down to just small arms fire again. So that's effect number one. Um, now we still keep the concentrate fire on there because that did happen and it was placed and so that actually still gets to count against the uh, Germans there. But that's going to definitely impact the 1-1's uh, the one -one's chances of survival here. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and now resolve. Um, let's see, we don't have any new PCs this term, so we're going to go straight to combat resolution. And again, I tend to just do the Germans left to right, and it's pretty straightforward that way. So we're going to go and start with the squad in the farm. So the 3-1 in the farm first. And this one's really easy. He's got uh, plus two for the card, plus two for the trenches, and he's facing zero uh, small arms fire. So that's going to be a plus four modifier, plus four net combat modifier. And a plus four result is a pin. So we'll go ahead and place a pin marker on that squad. Now we'll come over here and go ahead and resolve the units in the bunker. We'll start with the HMG. We have a plus two for the card, a plus three for the um, bunker, so that's plus five. We have a minus one crossfire. Actually, we lose the crossfire because the PDF out of the hedgerow disappears when we lose line of sight, so we don't even get the crossfire. So we have a uh, small arm zero, um, minus one concentrate fire, and plus five. So that's going to be a uh, net combat modifier of plus four against the heavy machine gun. And that plus four result is, not surprisingly, a miss. The squad is going to have the same plus four. And again, the plus four is a miss. So no effect on either the HMG or the squad there. All right, now we're going to come over and resolve our units here, left to right as well. And we'll start with the litter team in the woods. They have plus two for being in the woods, minus one and minus one for the concentrate fire um, and the automatic weapons, and plus one for continuing to be pinned. So that's a net modifier of plus one. And a plus one is a miss. And a miss in this case has the effect of removing the pinned marker off that litter team. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the third platoon, which gained a whole lot of attention by moving up there. So we've got a lot of units to resolve here. We're going to go ahead and start with the 3-3. Uh, three, three. The 3-3 three, three is the unit that was sitting there already. So we have plus 2, plus 1 is plus 3 for the 3-3. Three, three. Minus 1 is a net of plus 2. A draw of a plus 2 gives us a miss. Now we'll go ahead and draw for the bazooka. The bazooka is uh, in the same position except that it also has a plus 1 for the pin. So that means its net combat modifier is going to be a plus three. So plus two for the card, plus one for the cover, plus one for the pin, minus one for the um, automatic weapons. So a total of plus three combat modifier. And a plus three is a miss. Pretty good start. And because of that miss, it actually loses the pin marker. Okay, now we'll deal with the exposed units. So 
So we'll do the squad first, the two, three. And we're going to have plus two, plus one is plus three, minus two, minus one for a net combat modifier of zero. And we'll draw that. And a zero is a miss. That just leaves the HQ, which also has a combat modifier of zero. And it is also a miss. That was quite the set of draws. We've just uh, managed to avoid being hit by anything that that squad was able to fire at us. Okay, next we'll go ahead and resolve the 1-2 squad that's under fire from the cemetery. It's got a plus one for the card, a minus one for the automatic weapon, so that's a net of zero. A net of zero gives us a pin. So we'll place a pinned marker on that platoon. And then we'll finally move over and deal with our 1-1. One, one. The 1-1 one, one is facing minus five VOF for the HE, minus three more for the three concentrate fire, so that's minus eight, plus a minus one for the crossfire, so that's at minus nine. We get a plus one for the lower value of the terrain because it is incoming fire, and we have a um, plus one for cover, and a plus one for being pinned. That gives us a net of minus six. The worst we can actually get is a minus four. And what do you know, a minus four is a hit. So that was on the, the two-step squad. We'll draw for the hit result, and we get a casualty and a litter team. And draw those cards out. So we get a casualty and a litter team to replace the two-step squad. So our litter team and our casualty go down. We'll go ahead and draw for the paralyzed unit. That's also at the minus four. That's also a hit. And the result for that is going to be paralyzed still. Now that paralyzed lat we actually treat as green. So we would actually need to be checking the green on that lat instead of the line effect like we would have for the regular squad. So stays paralyzed. We'll go ahead and get all that stacked back up and remove the one one. And that was quite the mess. So with all that done, we've finished resolving all of our combat we can go ahead and do our cleanup now, get rid of a lot of exposed markers that are floating around. This pin marker should have come off because it was, sorry, this pin marker should have come off at the uh, start of the combat effects phase because that unit was no longer under fire. Um, we've got exposed markers here. Those exposed marker there. Okay, we got some flipping of fire to deal with now. This VOF is now going to be all pinned. Same with the fire on the farm at this point, since our unit here is pinned. I don't think we have any other VOF or PDF adjustments to make at this point. And with that, we are at the end of turn four.